Wow. Great being with you. Wow, it's been a while since I've been at BIA, and I used to be here all the time. Uh, I'm very, uh, very familiar even with the room we're in right here. This was a, a very big project that I headed up with the Spurgeons as a contribution and kind of a legacy project. So as I look around, I remember every, every corner, everything I drew to make this work. This was all a girl's dorm room and we had to gut it, and it was a very risky project. Uh, and it took a lot, but this became a community center for all of us, and we've been using it a lot, right? It's, it's what we gather, this is, this is like a place-making for community, right? So I'm really excited about architecture as a place to create place, you know, and, and build community. So I've, uh, I've been focusing a lot on community building my whole life, and uh, I see Dr. Hendricks in the in the room here. We have a, a decade before working with the Spurgeons, I worked with Dr. Hendricks in the 90s in, in the headquarters, and we did so many projects together. Every every weekend was like crazy, right? And we did books, and we did graphics. I see I see things around the room that I created too. So this this board, was I made this and graphics and we had it made and that poster and this room and so you know I hope I leave some kind of legacy with my work and I'm I'm very I'm very like excited about architecture because architecture and graphics and creating beauty is is something we do for each other so uh, I just have a little uh, interactive day with everyone today because it's something I've been up to quite a bit with communities. So let's see here. Uh oh. All right. So I was making a presentation and I found this picture in my computer and I popped it up. Some of you might recognize some of the people here, but that's my daughter, Shanna. She went to school here. All my children went to school here. We lived in the building top floor and we have the uh, Benini, Carol Benini, who's now, I think they're on a weekend retreat in upstate New York at a water park with like five other friends that they met at BIA. So these long lasting relationships, the school spirit, and that's actually Elizabeth Lavateria there. If you guys might know, she's a teacher now. And so all these little kids grow up to be great leaders and up to big things. So I don't know, I just saw this picture and I thought very, I had a very sentimental feeling about our time here with raising our children and how BIA was such a great community for us. And uh, one of the kinds of communities I like, it's called co-housing communities. So I've been designing co-housing communities and I realized BIA is a co-housing community, right? Because we live together, super intentional, we have a very clear intention why we're together, and also we have shared resources. So we have like a park, we use the university. This room is like a shared resource. We could do events here. So this is sort of, we're in a very, very successful model community, BIA and, and this Bridgeport community. So uh, if you guys know, like just four years ago, I, my wife and I, uh, I, w I won't say we retired, but we, we bought a farm in upstate Connecticut in South Barry, and it's a 300-year-old farmhouse, and we built an addition, and we raised this barn. This barn was falling over, so we fixed that up. That's my office and workshop, and then I have, we built like some yurts on the property for guests and my daughter had like a music studio in the yurt and this all happened like a few months before the pandemic we bought this like right before we like slid in and then all of a sudden it was locked down i was with my whole family at the farm during the pandemic and it was probably the best time of my life you know we really had a good time fixing it up being together cooking together and sort of uh Locked down, you know, it was like a lockdown at, in paradise. So uh, God really blessed us, as as Roger said. You know, we were really blessed by this, by by this, and we've been. I've been working on it since, but also I work with. Uh, I've been working with a lot of farms and agricultural communities. One of the things I like to do is I like to help um, BIPOC farmers. I, you're familiar with BIPOC. BIPOC is 
uh, black, indigenous, and people of color. So some of the, some of the disadvantages that they've had historically and around uh, agriculture and support. I, have an, I own an excavator, so I go to the farms and I help build roads and create terracing. And if people need me, I love to participate with a lot of farms. This is a farm in Pennsylvania. We, that was years ago, but that's an intentional community out in Pennsylvania. I was part of that for a while, helping that go. I'm not at the moment, but uh, that was a lot of fun, building farms and intentional communities. So architecturally, I've been up to some fun stuff. Um, I'm doing like helping people build yurts on their property, tiny houses on wheels for sustainability models. So I'm working with the Nishiwaki family right now with an auxiliary dwelling unit for Carl. So you guys know Carl Zambone was at BIA for years and years. And so he wants to be closer to his family. So we're building a whole like tiny house on their property. Um, sacred civic buildings, I've been doing a lot of churches and um, wedding pavilions, barn dominiums, you know, people live in like in a barn, but it's your house too, that's a fun project. A-frames and Airbnbs. So yeah, I've, I've had some really fun projects and there's more coming all the time working with wineries. I just was in an equestrian village in Milford. So I have a lot of cool work. I worked on Claudio's barn. Claudio's here, and that was a fun project. I love old barns and old houses that we make new, you know. So what I want to talk about today a little bit is like my commitment to community building. Like that's sort of what I do. I'm a, I'm a professional community builder. And I do that with architecture, but I also do that with consortium. So who knows what a consortium is? Consortium is a business, like a professional network. So I realized, I was looking back, and so like when I was with Dr. Hendricks in the city, I was actually started a green building consortium called Shades of Green Network. It was right around, you know, when Twin Towers fell, I was like, wow, what am I going to do? How can I make a commitment to building a future that works. So I started working with startups. People that were like, no, we gotta live sustainably, we gotta change the way we're doing things. So I built a professional network and we'd have meetings and LinkedIn and parties and you know, we had all this production experience from working with True Parents for decades, right? And I was able to use it with consortiums. So Princeton Green was another one. We, we it was like a sales force for green products. I worked with that for many years. Uh, then I started Unfold about eight, nine years ago. Unfold's my company. And Unfold is really a design process I use, which we're going to do today. We're going to unfold a community. So that's why I call my company Unfold, because it's really a methodology of creating the future you want, living into the future that you create. And so as a designer, we get to create the world that we want. And my latest project is called Hemp Hub, which Sounds a little funny, people giggle when I say it, but hemp is an incredible material, an industrial, it's an industrial hemp. It's like what this country used to make rope out of, uh, clothing, sails. It's a, it's a weed that grows, in a few months, it grows like 12 feet tall and it sequesters an enormous amount of carbon and we're using it in the building industry. And we're learning from the Europeans, the French never made hemp illegal because hemp is not marijuana, it's just a cousin. So they, they said, no, this is a great product. We're gonna. So they've been doing this incredible work with building and clothing and fabrics and all sorts of stuff. So I have a little network I'm working with now. And so we're really working to build a more sustainable future with better building practices and better uh, like sequestering carbon instead of pushing it out. So hemp actually sequesters more carbon than it creates. So I'm just working with global leaders. This is a, I work with a lot of indigenous tribes around the United States. I've worked with like 10 to 15 tribes already to build a hemp economy, which is for their housing really. It's like that, that's a hemp house you see 
right up there. It's actually just a building material that's insulation, it's fireproof, it's bug proof, and it's also uh, breathes. It's a healthy product. It, you, the air quality is really good. It's sound attenuation. The buildings are very quiet. So I just kind of like, wow, as an architect, it just checked all the boxes. I was like, wow, so let's create a community around that. So I've been having a lot of fun working with international architects, experts from France. I went to Amsterdam for a conference. That's Alex Barrow, like the OG of, wrote the book on how to build with this new material. Lisa Sundberg is a tribal member in California, and she's going, she created a institute, uh, what's Indigenous in Habitat Institute to help tribes live better. But anyway, let's get into why I'm here. That's just my little background, what I've been up to. I'm sure some of you have been curious, because you guys know Mr. Van Gelder, <laughs> Professor Van Gelder. But it's all around like community building. So this is the this is the interactive part. So what does that mean when I say listening at the level of community? I was kind of kind of talking about this with my wife yesterday. We went to visit my son Benjamin. You guys might know Ben. He was his birthday. We went, and I kind of said, "Oh, I'm talking tomorrow about this," and she said, "What does that mean? Listening at the level? You know, you better you better like show them." In the, in the talk, so uh, Roger and I are gonna, we're gonna like model this a little bit, but listening is a really, it's a really interesting way to be inside a conversation. So I'm in, in a two year leadership program right now, I'm in my second year, and like it's very advanced, and uh, we are all playing games in the world to make a difference, and we're getting coaching and training, and we're using a pretty powerful curriculum, but one of the biggest takeaway was like, they talk about what's in your listening. So when you talk to somebody, you can look and pay attention to your own listening. And I know it sounds a little weird, but in fact, if you already have a preconception about somebody, oh, I know, oh, I know Nicola, I know. I, it, oh yeah, we, he was you know, at BIA, he was a musician, and you know, he's a nice, oh, he's a new father. It doesn't have to be good or bad, but I have an already listening. Like I already have something kind of programmed. So when I talk to him, I'm kind of filtering everything through the already listening. And so that can be sort of limiting as we want to create uh, sort of uh, coming from nothing can be a lot more powerful because we get to create newly in our relationships, in our communities. So what I'm being trained in is listening at the level of team or listening at the level of community. And so, uh, I, in my, for example, in my hemp hub, I have like 15, 20 people we call every week and I, I'm not the boss. It's not a top-down organization. I don't tell people what to do. I'm actually causing leadership effective leadership in others by listening for what's wanted, what's missing, and what's needed. I'm actually a listening leader. And so as an architect, that kind of comes naturally for me. We have to listen to the client because that's our project, right? We're getting paid to design something for that client. So I have to do a lot of listening and people People often say, like, oh, architect, oh, God, oh, they're so arrogant. They already know what they, they know everything, right? Like, architects know everything. So you have to train yourself but to be a really good architect. I think you have to learn to listen. And the best ones are listening architects. They, they hear what's missing, wanted, and needed, and then they start to design. They don't come in with a preconception. So already, like an already listening is basically a preconception. You have a preconception about somebody, right? So when you do that, you start to feel like a wholeness or completeness when you really listen to somebody. And even a workability, something simple is like, oh, this is working, like we're building a community, we have a project, designing a house, like, wow, everything's kind of working. And it comes from a listening. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little role play with Roger now, and this is, 
at the, at the request of my wife, she said, do this, don't, no one's gonna know what you're talking about here. So do a role play with Roger and then this is what we're gonna do together. And you're gonna pick a partner at your table. You're just gonna pick somebody who's next to you and we're gonna do this. Okay, so actually I just wanna say Roger, actually, we had dinner together, my wife and I and, and you guys, we had a beautiful dinner at Claudio's and I asked Roger, I kind of was like, got into my mode. I said, Roger, what's, what's the future of this community? What do you see? And Roger started to share, you know, like, oh, are we really looking for, you know? So I'm gonna actually ask Roger, hey Roger, in your community, in our community, here in Bridgeport, what, what's really missing? What's, what's wanted? And what's needed? So I have a number of things. Shall I just do them all, or do you want me to well, get one to, at a time? Do it a few. Yeah, yeah. Do one at a time. You know, pick three. Three. Okay. So, pick three. so I think we have a great community here, Peter, and it's um, there's a lot of uh, closeness amongst our uh, members. They support each other and they take care of each other, and, and I think there's a, a strong spiritual foundation that we have. Mm -hmm. We need to grow. We need to reach out and be more embracive and bring people in. And to do that, we need the, the, uh, the space and the ability to be able to do that. So, um, but it's not just about space. It's also about the, um, the attitude and the, the way that we approach things as a community, the way that we take care of people. Got it. I got that. Is there anything else? Okay. Uh, other things that I think we need is uh, uh, a place, a community center where our youth can get together, where they feel they have a home, they have a base. Because although we can use this area sometimes here, it's not always available to us. Mm. And we need to have somewhere they can kind of call their own. I got that. I forgot that. Okay. Anything else? Um, you got to look. So this is where you look. You're kind of on empty. Look. Okay. I think we need a place to do education, but not in the way that we've done it in the past. We need relationship education. Okay, we need to be able to teach people how to grow up, first of all. How to become mature people, responsible individuals, and then how to relate to each other as um, a brother and a sister in the community instead of just as sexual objects. And then we need to teach people how to build good marriages and good families got it got it so i really got that roger i really appreciate you sharing deeply and what i heard what i heard was you really want to grow and you want a space to grow you really want like the youth to have their own center almost like a home and a base like a base um, you know, more than that, you want to also have availability, which is not always present here. Um, you want to have, uh, you want to work on education, relationship education. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, that education is about growing up, people to grow up, be more spiritually mature, even to the point of not seeing ourselves as sexual objects, but being more focused on marriage and family. And, uh, yeah, anything else? I think you got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, yeah, you can clap. So this is called reflective listening. So you're really kind of bite your lip. When people are sharing with you, I, was, I could already feel myself like, hey, Roger, great idea. You know, I used to have a, a client that I did a church project, and he... Zip it. You know, you got to zip it because it's not about you. It's not about, it's, I'm listening. 
I'm listening, it's a job, it's your job to really listen. And as you listen, you start to go deeper, because most people are a little bit like on autopilot, like, hey, Dr. Hendricks, how's it going? How's it going? Good, yeah, right, I mean, it's good, great. It's a little bit like surface. So then you say, but if you say the words, I want you guys, I want you to do this. I want you to say, I got it. Like, I got it. Let's practice that. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. If you do this in your relationships at home, with your husband and wife, with your kids, at work, if you say the words, I got it, to somebody, it will change your life. It will change your life. I'm not joking. You will experience like a depth. And what do we want? What do people want? People want to be gotten. They want to be gotten. So if, you, if someone's gotten with your, you create a safe space in a conversation where people are heard and more than heard gotten, you will feel an opening. Like love will start to become present. Like love and affinity start to like show up, right? Even like I can feel like we're even just our little kind of goofing around. I'm like Roger, you know. I'm really getting this pa his passion, his leadership, his love for family, his love for his wife, his commitment. What is he standing for? The difference he wants to make in the world, the legacy he wants to leave. I'm like getting Roger. I'm, and I'm giving him the space to do that. So we're just gonna do that for each other. And it's a practice. It's something you can use in your, your marriages. You, if, I'm telling you if, you, if your wife is gotten, your relationship's gonna get better. If you listen all the way, because you gotta go all the way. Roger's got more. But for now, this is good. You know, this is pretty deep. But if you go all the way, then a space is created. Because eventually people say, no, there's nothing else. I'm kind of done. You know, I shared everything. This is where we want to get to. So I'll talk more about it, but let's, let's do this together first. And I'll come back and talk about what, starts, what, what can happen when we start to listen at the level of community, or listen at the level of team, or listen at the level of family. Right, because we all, we all have families around the world and parents and grandparents and relatives, right? Can you listen at the level of family? Don't forget to thank the person you were speaking to. So just take a moment to thank them for sharing. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, Roger. Thank you for sharing. You can even acknowledge that person. You say, I acknowledge you for being authentic with me and sharing. Like acknowledgement is very powerful. So it can even be a little bit deeper than a thank you. So who has a feeling of like relatedness? After you spoke, do you got who feels related? Right? Who feels like affinity? Let me let me affinity is an interesting word. I'm gonna do the definition. Affinity refers to a natural liking, connection or attraction towards something or someone. It implies a sense of similarity, kinship, shared characteristics that create a positive bond. So if, when affinity is present, we start to feel love. So who feels like love is present when you talk to someone, right? So this is the power of listening. It actually, like, love shows up when someone is heard and they're not in like a debate. You're not trying to be right. Oh, I'm right, this is my opinion, I'm right. We get trapped in our opinions, right? We actually get trapped in our own opinions. And we only see through our opinions, like a filter. And actually, if, we all, if we're trapped in our opinions and our point of view, like trapped in our point of view, we're not in a conversation. We're not even listening. The, nobody's present with each other at all. You're just trapped in your own conversation, in your own head. And so who's experienced, you experienced that? I mean, I experienced that. Many times I'm like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. well I mean, I'm going to wait till you finish talking and then I'm going to tell you the way it really is. Because I know. 
And that's sort of my like strong suit, right? Like I used to think, I'm smarter than you. I used to like talk to people like, hey, thanks for sharing, but I'm smarter than you. And people used to say like, that guy's a jerk. <laughs> You know, like it re I really came across as very arrogant. It's sort of a disease architects have. We're like, oh, oh, so arrogant, right? And I had to really catch myself. I had to start being aware of the conversations in my head while I listened. So my listening is where it's all happening. It's happening in your listening. Oh, the Palestinians. Well, they're all terrorists. What? That's a listening. Oh, my mother. Oh my God, my mother. She is a piece of work. That's you, not her. That's your listening. So when we listen and we really kind of come from nothing and we, and we listen all the way through, love and affinity start showing up. And things become clear. You can clear a relationship. You can clear the space if you just listen on. It happened with my wife. I had a... She, we talked about a pro. I, did, I was doing a project in uh, it was East Garden in Hawaii, and I was the architect in Hawaii. And I was away from my family for months, right? And Joni had little babies. They were the kids were all really little. I wasn't sending a lot of money back. I was, it was a very stressful job. You notice I have like a a droopy eye. I got Bell's palsy. It was so stressful. But she, I didn't think about her. Like she was home with the kids, like holding down the fort. And it was all about me. And then one day I was in my, this course and they said, oh, you should, you gotta clean a closet, clean a drawer in your desk or go pay a parking ticket. And I was like, what? This is weird. I got home and there's a ticket, a parking ticket from Hawaii when I got home and I, I was like freaking out because I just took this workshop and they said pay your parking ticket. It was from three or four years ago, maybe, maybe more, like six years ago. And I jumped up and I grabbed a stamp and I, paid, I put a check in an envelope and I paid it. I was like, this is too weird. And then all of a sudden my wife, Joni, who many of you know, she said, oh, Hawaii, that was tough. And I had also just studied reflective listening. So normally, I would have said right away, oh yeah, it was tough for me too. Like that would have been the jerk, right? The one who's smarter than everybody. But I, I bit my lip, I literally like, mm. and I said, oh, I got it. Anything else? And she said, yeah, I was like, I had babies, and you weren't bringing, there was no money, and you weren't there, and I wanted out. And I was like, what? You wanted out? Like, out of the relationship? I had no idea. And again, I didn't say that, I just said, wow, I got it. Anything else? And she says, yeah, I, I remember, that was so hard, I don't know, like, like, I was sort of inside her point of view about me. Like, when's Peter going to leave again? When is he not going to take care of the family? When is he not? Like, her listening of me was clouded. And at, after I got all the way through, I said, I got it. I got it. And I said it back to her. Oh, so you were alone, and you yeah, didn't have a lot of money, and I wasn't supporting you, and I wasn't understanding your point of view. I got it. You know. And then she literally, like, her body changed. She was like, she like, opened up and she said wow i feel different like i feel like a weight's off my shoulder like 50 pounds she said 50 pounds you know it's off my shoulders so you carry we're carrying these things and it's a gift to really listen all the way and so i want to hear what you guys came up with right so we're going to popcorn this is popcorn i'm just going to go table to table and kilani's going to write down some of the things that like showed up for you. If they're super personal, you don't have to, but I think this is about community, so you know, let's, let's take a listen. So how about Dr. Hendricks? <laughs> I've been looking at him all night. I haven't seen him in 20 years. He's like an old friend for me. 
And this table, it's a table. Yeah. So what showed up at this table? What's wanted? What's missing? <laughs> what's what's the table? Well, the okay. table can share. Like, like, we're just going to write down some of the things that came up in the conversation. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll, we'll pass the mic around. Yeah. Got it? Okay. Um, what's missing is a common base, physical... We're talking, we talked, my... Uh, Taisuki and I talked about community, right? Not so much personal. Yeah, mm. Okay, so it's common, common base. Uh, a, a physical place is like a common base where you can have give and take action. And you also need a spiritual place, you know, which is a guided, found, which you have provided this morning, a kind of a guided format for communication mm. and method of communication, mm. which is give and take action, which creates energy. Yeah. And uh, and that in this way, I mean, there's so much more, of course, and I'll pass the mic. Three things, like popcorn, three things. That okay, and, really oh, like that would mean popcorn. Uh, pop, okay, <laughs> uh, I got too much butter on me, I'll pass it on. Just something you remember. Just, oh, okay, something I remember. Up. Yeah, so we, yeah, we, we talk, talk about new things, but. Um, yeah, so, you know, like, the physical space, that means, um, you know, that not only the place we gather together in the only Sunday service, but, you know, it's open place for the everybody, every time they want to come, no matter, you know, the generations, younger, older, come in, uh, talk about, you know, um, knowing each other, communication, uh, communicate with each other, and then uh, that's, Kind of like we can have what I say the common base, but you know we can have like a common issues, you know what you know as what we are facing to as a community, and then uh, um, so if, if we can as a community base, if we can share the um, uh, the issues or kind of you know what so we need what to deal with, yeah, what we want, yeah, what we, want. Yeah, what we need, what we want, right, okay. and then. Uh, um, I think that's the first place, and then so where the you know community leadership can go in. So uh, yeah, so that you know uh, we can make more bolder community. Okay, bolder community. Yeah. So you, yeah. you'll notice like what's wanted, and you can sometimes just do what's wanted and needed because that's what's missing. Right? You yeah. don't have to go to missing. You just go what's wanted, what's needed. So you know more sharing of the issues. Oh, well, that must be missing, because you want it, right? It's a missing. Good, okay. Let's, popcorn's more like raise your hand. Who has something interesting that they heard? Claudio. <laughs> I, I, it kind of stirred me up a lot, mm -hmm. and on the personal level, because I really realized how I don't usually listen. So I'm just uh, constantly showing off, and... Uh, talking and, and actually this guy I love him it really I see him for many years and he always come there and will say hi to me I, I naturally love the guy because he's fantastic he has the beautiful smile he's Korean so he's fantastic and uh, I do love him and I realize uh, that God put me sit down here talking to him for a reason and he was uh, I gotta listen <laughs> you know so I listened to him, and I realized how a wonderful man of faith. And I, we spoke about it. I got all the point. Uh, I got, you know, I got everything that he wanted to say. And actually, I, I really got it, and uh, I really felt that wow, that's love. So I'm basically in loving him. Yeah, you're in love. Yeah. I am listening, I initiate the act of law that God can come through. And that's how you really become community. This is why in the 70s and the 80s, the church was so powerful, because we really used to go out and really love them, stay there and listen to them. People were not joining the church because of the principle. Or they didn't know. It took years to understand who's father. But they were joining the church because there was that love. The listen inside, they really felt the law, like you say. So thank you, Peter. This is really probably the most useful thing I heard from many, many years. Thank you. Uh, I gotta say, 
I want to say something. Uh, this is a very vulnerable thing to say. Claudio said, usually I'm just looking good. <laughs> this is like all of us, right? Not just Claudio. Like, we have to take time to listen under looking good or pretending. Pretense. Like, you don't even realize. We're walking around like pretense. Like, yeah. oh, I'm an architect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretense. It's pretentious. Yeah. Right? And you want to be right. It's really protecting yourself. Yeah. There's a lot of protection around it. I don't want to look bad. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to, people to judge me. I'm, I'm pretending to, so I don't like stir things up. It's a form of defense, right? So if you can really create a safe space and a listening and community, then what happens is we kind of go deeper than pretense. And we start connecting on a soulful, deeper, and affinity is present. Like love and affinity are like present. And that's community glue. It's what I call community glue. What's the glue? Every community has a glue, right? Why are we here? You're not here for the coffee, maybe. Yes, I wanted to say that what Claudio was just saying is what is exactly why I came to this church. Because the person who introduced me to it, then introduced me to his family, and I'm like, wow, these people are so nice. They're inviting me to their place. And I just feel this love amongst them. I said, I gotta, you know, and, and at first I was really not gonna come. <laughs> I, was, I, I was even laughing with my friend after my, you know, the, the guy invited me to their house. They're like, yeah, like, we're ever gonna go there. <laughs> And, uh, but after experiencing the people, I said, this, this guy is so nice, I gotta see what, this, uh, what these people are about. Right. So yeah, I would you know, uh, right. encourage that. Yeah, what a gift, right? And so, so the gift of listening, it's a gift from God. You listen all the way. Bite your lip, especially with your spouse, like bite your lip. And also, you, uh, yeah, so just so you guys know, Damien and I, are, he's, he's hired me as an architect. He's designing a house. And he met me through Claudio and said, Claudio said, Peter, I got this friend. He's a nice guy. He's a plumber. <laughs> he's designing a house. I went to your house. I helped. I, you know, it's sort of, there's a, there's a vitality. There's like an econ there's a, like, economic lift when everybody's taking care of each other. There's like commerce. There's... Uh, give and take. There's, you know, like we thrive. So there's like a thriving in community when we listen and, and love is present. So anyone else? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. Got two in the back. You guys can pass it to each other when you're done. We're going we're gonna to tag team. We're going sh uh, to share something that the other, the other heard. Um, so, uh, you know, what we, what we need are more engaging um, presentations that teach us how to apply unificationism, how to actually uh, apply the way we live and teach people how the way we want to live to other people. Um, and and uh, secondly, you know, True Mother talked about trust and freedom for young people, but we really need um, our leadership to really apply that and make that real. So we gotta live up to what, we, what we're talking what, about. What's wanted, missing, and needed? Well, I think what's, what's missing is, is trust okay. in the 25 to 40 year old set. Trust from 25? Trust, trust, in, trust in, and, um, and belief in the abilities of, the, of our younger, younger people. Hmm. That they're not, there's no trust. So what are you going to put in place? Workability is like, oh, that's not present. It's missing. Oh, well, what are we going to put in place? Hmm. It's very simple, right? Like workability, integrity. Integrity is like a wheel. The wheel works, right? right. You count on it. But the spoke, uh, when a spoke is missing, 
you're like, oh, geez, I don't know if I'm going to ride that bike. It's out of integrity. Integrity doesn't have to have a morality to it. Like, I think I wrestle with that a lot in our movement. It's like adding morality to everything. But really, workability is a very simple way to, like, clear, just, like, keep it simple, right? Like, something's not working in our community? Okay, what are you going to put in place? You put something in place. So it's a simple way to, like, when it, through listening, you're in, you're in, you start being in action. Actually, possibilities. Could you go to the, can we go to the next slide real quick? I, I, I want to hear also from a, a woman. Let's hear from a woman next. There we go. And, and if, if you can say something real quick, one thing, what's missing one is you, because you're, you're a demographic. I am a demographic. Uh, I see, yeah, I... Well, I was talking to Bruce, and I just what we felt, or what I got, was just feeling like people care, uh, like a, being people caring for each other, making sure that they are okay, reaching out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say it's like making sure. Yeah, just being. Uh, Proactive and making sure that our brothers and sisters are okay. Um, and what are you pretending? What am I pretending? Ooh, this is, I haven't. Yeah, I've been in the conversation for so long. It's so funny. Um, what am I pretending? Um, I'm just thinking about my own experience. Like I'm really bad at responding into like group chats and stuff. <laughs> uh, I think I'm pretending uh, that I'm like super busy and I have like a. Like I, like, I don't need to, like, I'm always up to stuff, like, I don't, uh, no, okay. and I think I communicate that well to people that, oh, I'm busy or something, and, like, right. I'm up to stuff, I'm doing, whether or not that may be true. Amazing, yeah. thank you for being, thank you for being honest and authentic, right? Yeah. So, so he's like, hey, you want to, let's go get, do some brand practice, oh, I'm busy. I'm busy. It's a conversation. It's in your listening of yourself. It's a way. It's a way out of of intimacy. I do this, and I do another church, and then I have all my other friends and like right. stuff, and like a. Like it's like a back door. Yeah. Everybody's got a little back door. Like, yeah. ooh, I don't want to go there. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> so, okay, Daniela. So actually a lot of it has been said, but the idea is that unless we have an internal intention, the external intention is not going to happen. So we, we may want a church, we may want a building. I got news for you, we need people to clean this place after church. So there is, there is something that needs to shift on the inside before the external part can change. We may want to build it, but if we don't take care of what we have, God is going to say, sorry, this is not the time yet. So we have, you know, let's, let's get all these uh, big, beautiful ideas, bring them back to our heart. Let's spend 15 minutes after service is over to clean up, to bring more food, to volunteer. And this is going to really create the reality that God can trust us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So what I heard was that um, what's missing is like a clear intention, right? Like when you have intention, then everybody starts to kind of link up, right? We, we share an intention. So there's a bit of work to do that. You know, maybe we'll find something today that's like a common intention in this community and the community glue starts to lock in. So, this, this reflective listing is a way to do it, but what happens is you get, um, we're in this, we're right now listening for what we heard. So this is all a conversation. This is all happening in conversation. This is not magic. This is not like a science or hard, risky. It's a little risky, but so you get to, you get to cause your community. You get to be, our community, you, we get to be cause in the matter of our community, and we can really do it through conversation. So if you exercise this, you can say, like, hey, what am I pretending? What are you pretending? 
out. You know, like, oh gosh, that's a tough question, right? But if you create a safe space for that, people can share. What do you? What's missing for you? Oh my God, you know, like some, sometimes people just break down. There's a great movie with Michael Keaton, and he was the dad, and he was running a business, he was taking care of his kids, and he was, he was like this busy guy, busy, busy, like, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. And then someone asked him, hey, what do you want? And he like, he's a great actor, just like choked up and started to cry. It was like, oh, nobody ever asked me that. Nobody ever asked me what I wanted. I just thought I was supposed to be the dad, the businessman, the friend, the husband. I don't know what I want, you know? And then so that's back to intention, right? What do you want? And then the brain is a great tool. We have this great brain. Like if you give the brain a, a job, what do you want? It goes to work. It's pretty powerful, you know? You say, if you write down what you want, write it down. So we're gonna, we're gonna start to do that. Anyone else? Popcorn? Women, young people? Oh, graduate of BIA here, one of my former students. Um, so I was reflecting last year, about like last year and the, up until now that I've been living here and uh, it's almost nearing seven years, and things just kind of happened, and time just flew by. <laughs> like, it feels like I moved here maybe three, four years, but no, it's been seven years, and something that uh, I've also been reflecting is that, like, uh, when I have conversations with other people about like, hey, do you remember that time when blah, 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 blah happened? And I either don't remember it or I vaguely remember it. And it's almost like it's gone. And so I think aside from like listening and creating essentially, because that's why we're listening, um, building a community and all that, I also think it's really important to record it and like have a record of like, oh yeah, this is what I did, this is what we did. Um, also like the other day I was talking to Pastor Simone and she said that uh, she's really glad that uh, the, um, I forget, leadership uh, wants her to record everything that she does because but like she doesn't really do that but then she had that record and she was able to look back on like what she's done and she, even her herself is like impressed oh my gosh i've done so much and <laughs> it was just really interesting so i think that recording uh and sharing that with other people uh is what's really gonna help us grow thank you i got it i got it recording it. I had that feeling when I walked in the room. I was like, oh my God, I designed every corner of this room. I was looking at this thing right here. You must wonder, like, what is that thing? Well, that was actually a, a, for a curtain. We were going to have a stage in that corner so we could do our performances his because we were losing our theater privileges at UB. So I was like, okay, we got to design, we got to put this in place because it's a missing. I'm going to put this weird thing in here so we can hang a curtain and make a stage. I don't know, that's what I saw today. I was like, wow, I guess we never did that. We never finished, right? It's in incomplete. So, uh, but I'm going to ask you a question. So there's another thing about listening that's really powerful. And that is, do you have a confidant in your life? We should all have three confidants. What's a confidant? You can confide. Like, you can say anything to a confidant. Anything. So this inner dialogue that we have, it can really get us crazy, right? But if you can have, a commun if you can have communication around what's going on, and people make a safe space for you to do that, that's a really powerful way to also serve the community. Like, so, so make sure you're a confidant for somebody or you have a confidant, or more than one or two. 
So three confidants is the beginning of community. Communities need confidants, they need founders, they need a hunting party. This is a social science. Almost every, every community ever built in the world has this mathematics. Three confidants, five to eight founders. Those are the founders are people that are unstoppable. They're not get, they don't have to be paid. They just are building this community. Father was a more than a founder. He's a confidant, but he's a founder, right? Like you're going to find found a community. You got to have those strong people that hold it together. Then hunting party is like 15, 15 to 20. Means who's going out and bringing back the meat, <laughs> the abundance, coming back to the community because communities need to be fed. Then you have tribes. Tribes start to form. Wow, this is a this is a very vibrant community. They got a lot of meat. You know, the hunters are good hunters. Oh, let's make a tribe. And so there's some glue. There's some intention that holds them together and then you go to more numbers like tr a community or like an eco village you know like a village starts to show up and then it keeps growing and growing so but it starts with three confidants so anyone else? how are we doing for time roger i don't i want to keep i'd love to keep going this we could go all day because there's stuff here it's juicy it's juicy right what do you think Time wise, all right, we can wrap up. But what I want to do is reflect back some of the things and raise your hand if there's something like you really want to share that you didn't share. Okay, quick, uh, go ahead. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna reflect back. And we heard this. So I just wanted to share really quickly my conversation with Claudio. So we began by just talking about what do we think the community needs, and we both agreed that we want to do something for the young people. And so we started talking about. Um, you know, our opinions, and I thought, you know, it would be good if they had a place, as um, Roger mentioned, where they could uh, talk about what they want to do, what they're interested in, and sort of, they're, they're adults, they're responsible, and they can sort of choose what, you know, tell us what they would like. But then, it sort of shifted, and we talked about much more personal things. And, you know, I think it was the reason that I met him today, um, we, uh, in terms of what we needed, I had a chance to talk to Claudia about something that was very personal to us, and we both had very uh, strong personal uh, interaction with Fujin in the past, and uh, as you mentioned, a confidant, I found mm -hmm. someone who I can talk to this about, that was very uh, moving to us in the past, and how we, even in the present, I really took a few from his family, so it was just uh, something that I needed. So I found, I found like a brother. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. A brother, a present, a confidant, you can say anything. And that, if you don't have that, you don't have community. You'll notice that the community's not growing. That was like number one, right? We want to, I got that from Roger. Like, we want the community to grow. You have confidants in your community? Is it safe to share? Is it safe to say something that's almost unsayable? Something that's like ripping you apart inside? Like it hurts to say? Is there somebody that you can say, like I really gotta, I have to talk about this. I gotta get this off my chest, you know? It's like heavy, right? So if the confidant's not present, if we're not doing that for each other, community is not present and community will not grow. So there it is, you know, what do you put in place? You really start with a safe space. And for young people, that's what I heard. It's like, you if you create a listening for young people and you're not trapped in a point of view, they'll show up. They'll be here. Because it's like being heard, right? They're, they're being gotten. I just got gotten. Oh, thank God. I need that. So uh, we're going to wrap up, but I hear, let's just look a little real quick, you know, like what's missing is a common base, physical and spiritual, like a place, right? Uh, Dr. Spurgeon mentioned like a, also like a, not Dr. Spurgeon, sorry, Dr. Hendricks, uh, like a method, right? Like listening is a methodology, right? Oh, here's what we do for each other in community. We create a safe space to listen all the way. 
Not part of the way. All the way. Get to nothing. And that's what I want to, and then when we get to nothing, possibility starts to show up. When you have a conversation for relatedness, you will start, you will feel it in the room. Like, what just happened? Like, we're about to create something. When I'm working as an architect, I start tapping my drawings. I listen, I listen, I listen, I listen. Anything else, anything else? Got it, got it, got it. Okay, nothing else, nothing else. And all of a sudden, like, energy starts shooting through my body. I'm literally, and they're like, what are you doing with your hand? I'm like, I don't know, what am I doing with my hand? What? Oh! I'm like ready. I am so ready to start sketching and designing and like solving a problem, creating something new. So po when possibility is present in the community, it's very exciting. And there's a lot of power, a lot of power. And you start to align, uh, there's alignment. And you start to create. And then opportunities start to show up. Oh, I know a guy who does what we want to do. Let's talk to him or her. Like opportunities, like who are you going to talk to? Let's have a conversation with an architect or, well, I'm not plugging myself here. This is like what we do, right? What do you want to create? You know, an artist, uh, you want to create an event. You might want to create a, uh, a feast or a holiday or whatever you want to do. And then you also start to have like actions like, oh, make a promise. I promise I'm going to call you. Uh, Claudio is going to call me on Wednesday. By when? By when are you going to call me? Oh, I'll call you by 3 o'clock on Wednesday. All right. That's a promise. Don't break your promise. Don't break your trust with me. You're a person of integrity. Like, I, once we're into action, you'll see you start making stuff happen in your community. Why? Because you promised. You made a promise. I'm going to call you by 3 o'clock. I promise. I'm putting it in my calendar right now. We're going to talk about the youth center and creating a safe space to listen for younger people. Okay, great. Let's do it. We start. We started. There's momentum. And you got to deal with breakdowns, too, because breakdowns happen in communities. So you have to have conversations around breakdowns. So this is a whole technology for fulfillment that I'm studying. This is leadership, two years of work. And there's a technology for fulfillment for communities, for groups, for teams, businesses, families. There's a technology that we can all use. And then uh, let me just finish up here. So trust and belief in younger generations. I trust you are a better speller than me. <laughs> I was afraid to do this because I have like dyslexia. It's so embarrassing for me to write in front of a group. Um, so internal intentions, having a strong intention. Ooh, it's missing. If that's missing in a community, good luck. Uh, sharing issues, caring between people, better listening, sharing of love. We're imagining. We're imagining. Wow. That's what we're doing today. Uh, record the history. Like, look back. I, I, I had a rush with not seeing Dr. Hendricks. Like, all, like, 10 years at headquarters came rushing back. Oh, my God. Like, that was so epic. Doing Madison Square Garden two times. Doing RFK Stadium in D.C. I, we, we were, like, designing, doing all the books and rewriting Divine Principle and doing a subdivision at at East Garden and designing a house for two children. Like, oh my God. But like, if I look back, I'm just amazed. Like, we did so much back then. And I was a small part. You, you everybody did so much. And then, uh, yeah, record and at least three confidence. That was another thing. So, we're going to wrap up. Is there anything like, what's the biggest takeaway today? What, what did we learn? What's a big takeaway that someone can share? Reflective listening. Reflective listening. It's a tool. Put it in your tool belt. You have it now. You always have it. Do it with your family. And you know what? You know who you have to talk to. You know, right? You're like, oh, geez, I didn't call my sister. I said Happy New Year to all my brothers and sisters, all my brothers, but I didn't call my sister. So every day I wake up and I'm like, I gotta call my sister. Like, I know. It's on my mind all the time. So, like, call your, call, be in communication. 
you know you have to do it. So that's also another powerful tool for community. It's like, so uh, let me see, one more slide. Uh-oh, batteries. I don't know if you can do it manually. Designing a future we want to live into is listening and creating at the level of community. So you got, we get to create the future we want to live into. It's ours to do. We've got to generate it. And one more. That's it. Uh, you guys can, those are my contact information. You let me know. Thank you, Give me a big hand. Thank you very much, Peter.